Welcome to the first video in our series going inside the technology of MojoLoop. This is part one of a two-part overview of MojoLoop's purpose and design. First, what is MojoLoop? MojoLoop is a real-time payment switch for the interoperability between all classes of financial service providers. We designed it to lower the cost of interoperable payments for digital financial service providers, or DFSPs as we like to call them. In addition, this lowers the cost for customers, which is necessary for including the poor in the formal economy and realizing all the benefits that come from that. With MojoLoop, we are aiming for digital rails that are cheap to run, robust, and reliable, so they may be accessible to all. It is possible to achieve interoperability without a switch. A DFSP can create custom links between their services. However, with each new provider that joins the network, the complexity increases dramatically. In addition, it's all too possible for such a network to willfully exclude some providers and favor others. Therefore, this is not the kind of system we want. We want a system that is open and affordable to a diversity of players, even ones that don't exist yet. Banks, mobile money operators, microfinance institutions and more connect on a single loop. In Swahili, the word Mojo means one, and Mojo Loop is designed to enable exactly this kind of loop. However, alongside this system, we can imagine other loops. There are loops that use other currencies. Forex providers deliver that functionality. There are other networks, including existing ATM and card networks. Mojo Loops cross network providers can be used to connect these loops together. Mojo Loop is an example of a level one project aligned switch which is a blueprint of what we believe a good interoperable solution should look like today. Level one principles come from research that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation did into the characteristics of good financial service rails. What does this look like to me as a man or woman on the street? What are the features or use cases that a good payment system should support? In other words, why do I need good interoperability between financial service providers? To start with, I need it to be easy to open an account. If I already have a mobile phone, email address or bank account, I want to be able to use that as my identifier for sending and receiving digital funds. I shouldn't need to create a new number or profile to do that. I definitely want to be able to deposit or withdraw funds at any agent, branch or ATM machine without being penalized meaning I should expect ubiquitous access to cash in and cash out services, including the existing networks that DFSPs have in place today. I want to make transfers to anyone, whether they have a bank account or microfinance account, or any other type of account. And whether we use the same DFSP or not, peer-to-peer -peer or person-to-person -person payments are essential. I want to buy goods from a merchant from an online store or pay for utilities without concern for who their respective financial service providers are. I definitely don't want to have to pay more if we use different DFSPs. So merchant payments are important. But if there are differences in fees, of course I want to be informed of that. All fees have to be presented to me before I make a payment. So transparency is required. Fees must also be low so that low-income customers are not excluded from participating, including the poor is, after all, the whole point. I want my employer to pay me directly and easily with whichever DFSP they would like to use, and I don't want to have to move my account to that DFSP in order to receive my wage. I want to use the same account I use for all my other needs. So the system has to support bulk payments across financial service providers. Finally, I want to send money internationally as easily as I do within a single country. So for example, if I work in South Africa, I can easily send money home to my family in Botswana. These are the use cases that good interoperability must facilitate. And to do that, MojoLoop has been designed in a certain way. As a level one aligned switch, it adheres to a number of principles. The most important being, it must be an open system accessible to all categories of financial service providers. It must power real-time, push-only payments, 
meaning they must not delay the clearance of funds or allow funds to be extracted from accounts without explicit consent. It must make payments irrevocable, with near real-time settlement, or at least same day. This reduces complexity in the system, which also reduces costs. High-frequency settlement reduces liquidity burdens on DFSPs, allowing smaller and larger DFSPs to better interact. And a switch must also follow a participatory governance model. This is because our first idea is often not our best, and a community approach to evolving the services ensures transparency and improvements that drive the whole ecosystem forward. These four principles dictate how we should design our switch. Additional principles describe how it should function. For example, providing self-issued accounts is important so that I may take my account identifier with me if I change providers. The same way I can keep the same telephone numbers I move mobile phone service from one provider to another. DFSP should pre-fund the solution so that the settlement collateral is never in doubt. Having a centralized solution for monitoring activity gives DFSPs greater insight and reduces the cost of protecting the end customer. And a centralized architecture means that the solution can scale, minimizing costs per service call and maximizing the benefit of economy of scale. By following these principles and characteristics, we can provide a platform that supports the general case of one person using one DFSP to make a purchase or send money to someone using a different DFSP. That is the essence of interoperability. For the users, this is quite a simple and quick process. Gladys enters the account identifier for John and the amount she wants to send to him. Within seconds, the money is sent from Gladys's account and received in John's. And John can spend the funds he has received. Underneath the surface, Mojoloop has to do three things to make that happen. Step one, after Gladys initiates the payment to John, Gladys's DFSP, as the payer participant, looks up which provider John's account identifier is registered with. That's the payee participant and checks that the person with that identifier is in fact John. Step two, the payer participant submits a quote to the payee participant for the transaction. The payee confirms any costs and confirms that the transaction meets their rules, creating a cryptographic deposit slip in the form of an ILP condition. Step three, if all is well, Gladys confirms the transaction and Gladys's DFSP requests the transfer to John. Payer and payee participants, along with the Mojo Loop switch, execute the cryptographically verifiable contract to immediately clear funds and allow John to spend his funds. Though it happens in seconds, that sequence is actually quite intricate. In the next video, we explore it in detail, including how Mojo Loop resolves the settlement of the DFSP ledgers. I encourage you to watch that video and hope you learned something from this one about how MojoLoop enables interoperability and financial inclusion. On behalf of the MojoLoop community, I'm Warren Carew. See you next time.